Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff with Max Stadium coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Plex and we're going to take a look at what the benefits of the Plex Pass is. So what is it that Plex Pass offers? Uh, I'm also going to take a little bit of a look at uh, some of the multi-user functions as well, but let, let's start with Plex Pass. Now, um, to show you a little bit about uh, what that adds, let's just go in here to uh, Settings once you're inside your Plex uh, media server. And if you remember when I went through uh, all of the details of this, that the dashboard area right here needs a Plex Pass subscription, and so does Sync. Uh, both of those need the actual uh, subscription for those settings to, uh, to work. And so let me just go back to general here. And so what I want to do is show you uh, how to set that up. And so if I just uh, pull up uh, the Plex web page here, you can see this is the Plex Pass. And so it allows you to use Plex for Chromecast. So if you're using Chromecast on your television, uh, the Plex Pass is what you need to make that work so that you can get Plex on your television that way. Uh, we have Plex Sync, which allows you to sync your media with your uh, Android or iOS device so that if you're offline, you still have the content with you. So that comes in handy if you go on a trip or, or something like that. You also have Cloud Sync. So if you'd like to sync your media uh, from your uh, server at Mac Stadium to uh, Dropbox or any other kind of online cloud uh, service, you can do that. So you could access uh, that information from there uh, if you needed to. Uh, again, it gives you early access to different features. Like some of these features may eventually roll out into the main Plex once they get uh, new features that they're working on. Uh, you get free apps for Android and for the Roku. Uh, and, uh, they can't do it for iOS just because of uh, Apple's limitations. Uh, so you still have to pay for that app. And then you get multi-user control. Uh, where your friends can uh, you know, see their watch status and all of that from your uh, Plex library. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit. Multi-user itself is not, does not require Plex Pass, uh, but to get the different features uh, of you know, their own, uh, what they've watched, how far they're into a movie, all of that kind of syncing, uh, that information does, uh, does need a Plex Pass. So to sign up for a Plex Pass, uh, you can see we've got the information on uh, on Plex right here. Uh, you can choose between a monthly subscription for $3.99, a yearly for $29.99, and a lifetime for $74.99. And if you think you're going to use a lot of these features, the lifetime really is the better value. Uh, but just for the sake of this uh, tutorial here uh, with this login that I've got, I'm just going to choose the monthly. And so when you click on that, then it asks you for your credit card information and all of that to subscribe uh, to Plex. So I'm going to fill that information out, and then uh, I'll come back and walk you through what Plex Pass has to offer. Okay, so I've subscribed to Plex Pass, and you can see that the subscription information has gone down below. So I should be all set. So let me just uh, pop this down here. And so here I am again on my, uh, my media server. And I've got uh, the dashboard and all of that. All you need to do is just uh, refresh uh, your Plex uh, install there. And now when I go to Dashboard, uh, you'll notice that it's opened up the dashboard itself. Remember, before this said I had to have a Plex Pass. And so on this dashboard, what it does is it uh, gives me the ability to, um, you know, to actually make some changes to some of these things. So what I can do is I can decide which of these different settings I want to have live or not whether I want to have those on there. And then there's some sub-settings as well. So for instance, on the on deck here, you can see I can adjust the priority uh, based on when the most uh, recent video was watched. I can show uh, wide thumbnails, uh, none, first, all. So I've got some settings on that. And you can see that I've got those uh, for certain ones of these where I can actually uh, adjust that information and make it work. Now, I can get rid of things like announcements, for instance. So if we just uh, go home here real quick, you notice I have this announcements area over here that kind of shows me uh, upcoming uh, information. Let's say I don't want that because uh, I feel that that's a, uh, that's a distraction. So what I'm going to do is uh, just come in here and I just uncheck it. And then I just uh, click Save. And then you'll notice it's gone now. And so this has moved up into its spot and uh, that, that information is gone. So there is a, you know, a little bit of customization that I can do uh, in here within the dashboard of just you know, turning things on and turning things off depending on what I want. So uh, just a little feature that's added. Now the other thing that was added is sync. And if you remember sync before, this was again wiped out where I couldn't use it. Uh, but you see here I can define the actual quality of sync here in my settings. I can say I want the uh, video to be encoded low, medium, high, or highest. So I can actually set the, uh, the quality there, depending on bandwidth. Uh, I can also set the uh, audio quality as well. 
in the same way. And then uh, pictures. If I'm syncing pictures, I can say what I want the quality of those to be. And so I can set those settings up here, and those will take effect with the actual uh, Plex Sync itself. And so what I want to do now is let's talk a little bit about the uh, Plex Sync so that you can get an idea for how this works in terms of the things that you might want to sync to your uh, various devices. So let's take a look at Sync. Okay, so if you want to sync now uh, to a device, now that we've got uh, Sync set up so that everything's ready to go, uh, all you need to do is to uh, pick an item you want to sync. So if we go into, let's say, Home Movies, and uh, we've got cats here. Now you'll notice something on the side here. Notice we've got this arrow that's been added that says Sync to Device. So now we have sync options here. And if I was to uh, click on this, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to sync uh, my entire home movies folder. So both of these, it will actually sync it over. Uh, and I can, I can set the quality and all of that. I can say whether I want to uh, show them as unwatched or not. And then I can limit uh, by the number of items or by duration. You know, if I wanted to limit by number of items, I can say how many items from this library I want to sync or by, you know, duration, by how long the items are. You know, so if I just wanted to limit that to save bandwidth or time, again, sync is usually used when you are going to be offline. So if you're going on an airplane or something like that, you won't have internet access, but you'd like to watch your media, this is what you would use to set that up. I'm going to cancel this right here because I'm just going to do one of them because I want to show you too, when you go into an individual screen, you also get this sync to device and the menu just simplifies and then you just select the quality that you want to sync it at. I'm going to leave it here. I'm just going to click sync and you can see that now it's saying this media is going to be synced to your device. Uh, watch the status here and so we'll say watch status and so you can see this is now the sync status of what's going on. You can see that it uh, looks like it's it's already uh, syncing and going through that and it's going to sync it to my iPad all right, because that's where uh, that's the only other client that I have that has Plex on it that Plex knows about. If I had multiple clients, then I would just pick the client that I wanted to sync to. And so this information now is going to be syncing to uh, to that device. And then, like I said, I can watch it offline. So that kind of shows you how sync works. Now what we'll do is let's take a look at what that looks like on the client side on this device once it's been in sync. Okay, here I am over on my iPad. And so now we're going to check on the information that we have, uh, have set to sync. You'll notice down at the bottom I've got a little sync icon uh, with a little flashing exclamation point. If I just tap on that, it brings up a little window that shows me uh, that I've got my iPad. It's never uh, been synced. And uh, I can sync it now. There's also a settings button here. If I just uh, tap on the settings, uh, you can see the, uh, the different quality, uh, whether it should sync automatically or not. And so I can say when opening Plex or when modifying content to have that happen. Uh, I can also see the item uh, that needs to that that's uh, I've set up to sync. If I just click the question mark there, you can see it shows me the quality. Uh, you can see that it's waiting uh, to download. I can stop the syncing if I want to. If I just go back here, I can also delete the content if I don't want to sync it at all. Let me just uh, tap off this for a minute. Let's tap this again. All I got to do now is say sync iPad now and you can see that it's starting the sync inf uh, information and now it's syncing resources. You can see it going through the motions and so now uh, my information has uh, is in sync and so now the, the cat video has sunk, sunk to my library. If I just go into the home movies on the server, uh, you can see now that under the cats there I've got this little uh, arrow that shows that that video is, is in sync. So I, I have that actually on my device. The other one is not. So that way when I'm offline, I'll be able to actually view that particular uh, item and I won't be able to view the others. So that kind of gives you an idea of how sync works. Like I said, it's really great, uh, especially when you're on a trip uh, to have your information in sync. And so it, it does make the Plex Pass worth, worth it, especially if you're going on a trip. So next we'll take a look at how do you do the cloud sync and what does that look like? Okay, now to get Cloud Sync set up, uh, you want to go into the Plex.tv uh, page and you want to go up to um, your actual username up here. And you'll notice that now in our account, we've actually got a Cloud Sync button now. So if you just click on the Cloud Sync button, you can see here are the various services that Cloud Sync will work with. And so we just need to link uh, Plex to one of those services. So we're going to click on Dropbox here because that's a pretty common one. And so what you want to do is sign into Dropbox. So I'm going to put my information in there right now. Okay, once I have my information in there, I click sign in.
And now it asks if I want to create a folder in Dropbox for Plex Cloud Sync. And I just say allow because I want that to happen. And so now you can see that uh, Dropbox is actually linked now uh, with my Plex account. And so it's all set up and ready to go. Uh, you can see over here that I can edit uh, this particular sync, reauthorize, or I can unlink it at any time. But now Dropbox has been set up and is linked. So now what I'm going to do is let's uh, let's take a look at how I would use that then inside of Plex. Let me just uh, let me just pull up the Plex interface here. And so here we are inside Plex. And let me just uh, let's go home for a minute and let that reload. And then let's go back in and take a look at how this works. Now it works very similar to the regular sync when I come into let's say home movies here. And uh, now let's say I want to sync. Uh, let's just say I want to sync uh, this particular one right here again. And you can see here that uh, I've got uh, the sync dial right here again. If I just click on sync, now it gives me the option on whether I want to sync it to my iPad or whether I want to sync it to Cloud Sync. And so if I just uh, tap on Cloud Sync, uh, it'll tell me the title. Again, I can set the quality and all of the information like before and then just click on sync. And so now it's saying, great, it's doing it. If I want to watch the status, I can click here. And so you see this little cloud icon here that shows that uh, that's uh, syncing up to the cloud and you can see that uh, it's going through that process there and so once it's done then it adds uh, some information to my home screen here let's see if it's done yet we're just gonna go to the home screen and you can see here when we come back home it's now got a new home movies area here because this is my cloud sync and that means that that particular file now is sitting up on Dropbox so that I can access it whenever I want off of Dropbox and don't have to go through Plex if I don't want to so that's kind of a nice uh, nice feature of it. Now one more thing that I want to cover uh, real quick is just the multi-user uh, library. Uh, so you can see how that works with the feed. So let me show you how that works. Okay, to add uh, other users to your server, uh, what you need to do is come back to the Plex TV page, go into servers right here. You can see there's our CloudSync server now and this server. And uh, you can see anything that's shared uh, with you. Uh, but let's go ahead and share our server. So we're going to click on share this server. And then what you want to do is you click share with and you can say share all sections and you can allow sync or not so that they could actually sync their information as well. I'm going to click on that and then what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and put in uh, an email uh, here or username so that I can share uh, this information with. And so uh, if you put an email in it should send a link so uh, what I'll do is I'll, let me just put in a, an email there and then we can get that shared. Okay, then I'm just going to click share. And so now it's sharing it with me. It knows uh, the user. It says it's sharing all my libraries. And then it tells me whether it's accepted or not. So what I'm going to do is go uh, over to my other machine and accept this and then show you what it looks like on this side. Okay, so now I've accepted the email uh, from my other account. And you can see here that uh, now it says it's being shared. I can edit it. I can revoke it if I want to revoke the sharing anytime I want. If I just uh, click on servers here, I'm still on my Mac Stadium server. Uh, you can see I've got Cloud Sync, I've got servers, and if I ever wanted to change that again, I just come in to edit the sharing right here. Okay, so now let's go and let's take a look at a screen share that I have an actual local computer, uh, the one that I sh shared with from my uh, Mac Stadium server, and let's see what I see on the client side now that I've shared that. Okay, here I am over on the client side, and uh, you'll see I got a different name up there. Here's my client, so I'm on my local computer right now, and not on my Mac Stadium uh, server. And you can see that now I've got uh, my server here that I can share, and one shared with me. And you can see this one's shared by Mac Screencaster, and I've shared six libraries. And so if I just pull up my Plex Web uh, from here then, uh, you can see that here's my library for my local computer. But if I just scroll down, here's all the shared libraries that I have that are sitting on my Mac Stadium uh, server. And so the nice thing is, is you can use this to share uh, with your friends and uh, different people who have Plex. And as you can see, I go into Home Movies again, and there's my videos. And so I can play these. It'll remember my location and all of that separate from... Uh, what I have on the uh, on my Mac Stadium server, so that multiple users can look at this stuff at any time that they want. And you can see up here, I've got my home movies, shared uh, movies and TV shows from that particular server. So that kind of gives you an idea of how that works and some of the benefits of that, and really what uh, what the Plex Pass uh, part can uh, can give you. So that's all I have for this week. Hopefully, that gives you a great understanding of Plex. I'll be back at you next time with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac in a hosted environment.